So welcome back for the second half of the workshop. The second half is actually workshop. So the first half was just trying to get you an overview of tutorial, more or less, kind of. Um, here in a moment, I'm going to pass out some uh, USB sticks that have the presentation that I just gave, so the, the PDF for that. It has the, um, the networking TS implementation by Chris that we will be using and that was using the slides previously. It also has um, the latest draft of the TS, which is a great place to find information if you love reading that type of thing. If not, if you go to, um, we'll, I'll give you the URL here in a minute, um, Chris's URL that is for ASIO that is not the Boost ASIO, it is close. There, there are a series of things that are different, but it's close. The, um, so the idea of this session here is uh, we're gonna have some exercises to work on, okay? And we're gonna try to get comfortable with using the networking TS, performing some of, you know, a variety of different tasks, maybe independently and maybe as groups, um, and uh, trying to actually write some code that works and does some networking stuff by the end, all right? Um, so, super <laughs> informal. Um, this, uh, this is our junior engineering group at Kira. Kira, we, um, Kira sponsors a uh, robotics club um, at a Title I school where we go and hang out and, um, and help, help the kids out with a variety of different things. And uh, this coming year, this, this next year, we'll be working with City Year and expanding that through a bunch of schools throughout the Sacramento region. Um, but long before that, um, about four years ago, we started um, what we call the Junior Engineering Group where kids learn how to use 3D CAD design, do 3D printing, use CNC machines, do electronic layout, learn about electronics, uh, learn about programming, and then try to put them all together and build robots of some sort somewhere along the line. And um, some of these kids we've actually um, have had for a few years, actually. Um, so everybody in the picture we've had, at least this is their second year, and they've all done a pretty good job for this particular group. But this, this group found out that I was coming to speak somewhere, which is why I was not going to be around this week. Um, when they showed up, and they, want, they wanted to actually um, somehow figure out how to use the robots that they had just recently built. So, um, what we're going to do is, this is actually the robot that they all, they all designed and built their own robots. This is very close to the design of one of the kids' robots. Um, uh, this girl right here. And uh, this is basically her robot. Um, we added, we added a, a capture on there that, that wasn't there before to help with the motors because they were kind of getting wigged out a little bit. But you can see it is put together with Velcro because Velcro is a very cool thing to use. Uh, it has a Raspberry Pi that is literally hot glued to the top. So, you know, this is like put together by kids for you to use. This is the final level of the game um, that we will be playing. In the middle of the game, we have four of these little robots. Um, I, I recommend, you know, one pairing up with some people, writing like server side, somebody writing client side so you can control them. So what the kids do, they use, it, they use Scratch. Um, some of them, some of them use Python right now um, to do it. And um, one of the middle games of our little fun that we're going to have is using the networking TS to submit your name to a web page that I'll bring up here in a moment that will show all of your submissions so that I can delete the ones that are duplicates because you guys cheat, I can tell already. And um, then we will randomly give one away at the end and uh, I don't know, it could be a desk toy for you or something. Um, so let me start by uh, passing these around. Oops, I moved them again. Okay, so uh, if you want to just grab one, pass it around. Um, this has the code that was all in, from the previous bit, the slides, and then more importantly, maybe the header files for the networking bits um, so that you can actually compile it and make it go. Um, so the very first thing to do would be to make one of the programs inside of the the examples directory actually compile and run. Okay, that's like number one. Number two, Arthur tells me, is fixing the async example 
that has the same bug that we saw in the synchronous example, which is it doesn't read just the header. It reads too much information. It gets the header plus whatever was inside the buffer, so it ends up with part of the body also. Fix that so that it only gets the header, okay? And then um, we'll just start with that, and I will get the URL up and stuff for the third one along with the protocol of where you need to be able to send something in order to get your name registered. Um, and then after that, it's like we got four robots. Wh whoever wants to start with robots, they're easy to work with. We'll help you out. Um, so there you go. And uh, as far as format goes, I don't know if you guys, if any of you were inside of my, um, the spirit workshops that we've done. Um, I, this is where I get to wander around and try to be smarter than you are for just a brief moment and solve the problem before you do on your screen. I haven't had a lot of sleep, so that might not work well, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try really hard. All right, so, ready, set, go. <sighs> If you were laptopless, that would be like team coding experience time, right? First thing is just to try to get one of the examples to compile. Just start with that. So um, let me, I'll help you get set up here. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, so you're, um, your uh, directory should look something like that, right? So you've got an examples directory. Um, when you're compiling this, you will want to make sure that you have told your compiler that you want C++14 as a, as a requirement. And then it's a header only <laughs> library. So simply point your include directory into this networking um, TS, and then there's an include inside there. Can we ask questions? Yeah, no, that's the whole idea, yeah. Uh, Please ask other questions. Other than Chris's networking TS implementation, do you know of any other major compiler vendors that are shipping right now? There are no compiler vendors that are shipping with it, no. Do you know an approximate time frame for when you could expect that to I do not. Yeah, so it's not, so right now the TS is a draft, so um, it's inside of this, I have no idea what the PD stands for, but PDTS? Proposed draft technical standard. Technical specification, there we go. Um, and maybe in July it becomes the real deal. Um, so right now, as far as I know, the only implementation is Chris's implementation, which is based upon the non-boost AZO and gets munged around a little bit and then moved over into the GitHub repository. And as far as you're aware, most people when they come up with their own implementations, they don't look at any existing, they just do it from scratch, right? I have no idea. I would hope that they look at existing. I would hope they would look at the existing. But but I, I don't know. I wonder about licensing issues. Like I'm always thinking that there's like one reference implementation that's getting out there. Yeah, so the reference implementation is released under boost license. But for a new, for example, I assume. So
So um, it could, right? So the boost license, you can do anything you want with that code. If you wanted to take the boost code and then relicense it as part of, in that case, it would be LGPL, right? Have at it. So I, I know that uh, his implementation, actually the specification itself has de uh, uh, declarations for executors that are different than other proposals that were proposed around the same time as this one came up. Yeah. Do you know that, is, there, is the plan to go with this as the networking TS and then merge them possibly down the line? Or is it more, is it that you're gonna wait to merge the notion of executor and then? Okay, so uh, the question about executor, uh, which eventually you have to answer, you just can't avoid, I think, is um, there is a, mm, I'll get it up here in a moment, because I already have it open. Um, there's a, there is a unified executor group that meets on a phone call every two weeks um, with the intent to take all of these diverse ideas with the same name, uh, maybe they're not super diverse, and, and pull them together, right? Um, so the thing that networking has going for it is that networking is a concrete implementation of something. Um, <coughs> But there are a lot of people who are interested in the concept of an executor, right? And so they're trying to come to a conclusion of what, what an executor might look like. Right. I, I think the changes would be minimal um, once you decide on a unified executor pattern, then you can go ahead and change network TS and existing implementations to that new one. The question is, will they wait for that to be decided before mm. including the networking TS in a, in a standard? I don't actually know that. I think it's a great question. Um, I don't know. Yeah. No, no, no. This is a, it, so it's a really good question. I can tell you. I can tell you by talking to some standards people, people on the standards committee recently, that uh, their view is that they are trying to become to get a unified something. It's hard to do, um, and. Um, perhaps sometimes it would, it, it might have been better if they didn't try to unify it and just come with different names for all these things. Like, like who cares if parallelism has something that's called, you know, whatever, and networking has something that's called. I mean, I think. Presumably you'd want to use the same executor across your system at different levels. So it may matter that they're the same object or the same type. Per, perhaps, right. yeah. It might matter. It can certainly matter. You, you could also make the argument and uh, Mark, um, from VMware, who, who was here earlier for the first session at the break, was talking about how um, he can't actually see some commercial, you know, or packaged version of an executor that he would ever use. That they rely on them heavily internally, and that they would probably just, they've got certain rules that they like, and they would probably just keep re implementing those. So you can imagine that for communications, right? I meant the standard, like the, the interface would be decided upon, and then you provide the implementation. That would be awesome if they could agree. And last question. If you had to write your own networking TS implementation, do you have any ideas about how long you think that might take you to write? Um, is this, a, is this not that you already know exactly what the interface is, because most of the time the hard stuff is to come up with the interface. Right? The, it, so the specification? The specification is already out there. So. If you had to write your own, it's a lot of work. License didn't allow you to use networking <laughs> TS. What would you would you say? Three months? Would you say a year? I, I wouldn't say anything at the moment. <laughs> I think I think it's big. Big. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Does anybody have problems with the initial compilation part? Um, I think it's just the one won't compile because of that. The, the async future one? Uh, quite possibly. Yeah, I think async future will not compile, but I, everything else should compile. I'm in async one and I'm getting an exception before the first line of main runs. Which one are you in? Async one. Oh, yes. Yeah, so uh, it will compile, but it's going to fail because the thread is going out of scope, um, and it hasn't been joined. Okay. All right. Um, this is only compatible with the latest plan? Uh, also, with or, also GCC. Yeah, it just has to have um, 
14 or okay. more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so if, you, if you've got um, async1 compiling as it is, running, maybe doing something, the, um, the place to maybe start is to fix this problem. Can somebody articulate what the problem is here again? Trying to read in um, the header. You can be rude. For, go for it, yeah. Yeah, horrible, horrible idea. So Kirk, Kirk nailed it. Um, don't write code like this. So I mentioned at the end of the, of the first part, we want, to, we want to layer. Something should be involved with trying to figure out how to get communication bits, right? Mm, pulling bits in, that's what it does. Something else should figure out how to maybe chunk those Something else should figure out how, what the protocol is of the chunk thing that it has, right? You want to build in layers, and you can do that with this stuff. So, so the, the root answer is that um, don't bake your algorithm into your low-level communication. Always, always bad. Um, the why it didn't work on the slide answer is... <laughs> What does read until do? Async read until? It reads until anything accumulated into the buffer contains that. Yeah, so anything inside the buffer is going to contain that, and then it's like, okay, I'm done. And there might be more in the buffer than you expected, so um, figure out a way to fix that. So where is the amount of data read or attempted to be read, specified, or implied, or so um, it, is, uh, it is going to use, um, because it's a dynamic buffer, it's going to use what, whatever the next, the next bit is that's available without having to reallocate. That, that's what it should do, according to the specification. Okay, but that's like step. It, well, that, that's in the non-normative text of note. This is what we think you should do. So, um, the spirit is that it's going to be stacked. It might be somewhat underspecified, but it's not that it, the intention is that it's underspecified. That, like, as a, as a user of this, I would not have any idea of knowing how much it's trying to read. Oh, I think you don't have any idea. Okay. And I don't think you should rely on it. Okay. If you want to know, and, I'm, and I missed this on the earlier slides, if you have a very specified amount that you want it to read, yeah. that buffer should be set up for that size. And then it will read exactly that amount or until it has an error or satisfies if you have a completion condition. I don't think that made anything better.
iron. I broke it. What do you see on the video in the back? Do you see like all the screen spread out or do you see what's up here? I see what's up there. Okay. Okay, so since um, I'm going to assume that since you're not all web developers, you, you probably aren't intimately uh, familiar with what <laughs> headers look like. So th these are the raw headers for an HTTP um, post. And uh, so we've got a post. This is the URL bit that we're sticking it to the path register. Um, the host will be cpp.kiera.cloud. The port is 8,000. Uh, the content length is important. The content length needs to match the length of whatever the content is that you're sending. Otherwise, the server will, will deny the request. Um, you can see that we have the carriage return new, new line after all of these, um, and then the blank line saying that we're done. And then this is kind of basically the body. And the body is just a JSON format with the, an object that has a name. And then the PSK, those are the two things that are required. You can add other things if you would like. And if you are successful at putting something together and posting it, not using curl,
then it will show up on this list. And at the end of the session, after I've removed all the duplicates, I'll hit the random button, and then that's who we'll give the robot to. Does that make sense? So, uh, probably to get credit, you should show me what method you used in order to post the data. Maybe we should have used a weighting scale, weighted scale. You know, if you just use the cheap streaming bit, you're like, eh, it's only worth a one. All right, is there anybody who's having problems with compiling? I love looking at the output of template instantiation errors, so. Are you looking at the future one? It, it will not compile. Yeah, use future. Uh, use future. Yeah. This stuff is pretty much ahead of you. So this um, this example, um, I'll go ahead and make so everybody can hear the the example that's called async underscore future will not compile even after you fix the user future to be use future. <laughs> The, and it'll give you a bunch of template instantiation spew, and somewhere in there it will say that the copy constructor has been deleted for something or another. Well, the reality is, is that we're trying to move it. We don't want to copy it at all. And the move isn't working for dynamic buffers. So if you were to change the code that's already in there and just not use a dynamic buffer, if you just use some like fixed size mutable buffer, it'll actually compile and work. It's just a bug inside of, of this version. Don't use the future. Be in the present. So I noticed that the port number is passed all the way through this string. Yeah. Which is a weird database. Right. Yeah, because so the um the comment is about port number is a string. Um it's actually not the port number that you're passing, it's the service name. So part of... So um, name be like 80? It could be 80, at which point it will look to try to resolve 80 as um, a service, and it won't find it, and then it'll say, oh, it must be the port, and it'll resolve it that way. So it allows you to do all the things you would normally like to do in networking with normal name resolution, which is you provide the service name, and the correct port then is associated with it. It's handled by the it's handled by name resolution, which is part of your resolver. So you've got you've got a DNS name and you've got a service name, and something always ties those together. You're not buying it. No. Are you running Are you running Windows or Linux on there? Oh, well, you, you also have a magic file hidden in the I'm not a BSD computer spot. Based on any of those examples, I should post this uh, registration. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, what you got? So it's running in GCC 5.4. Okay. And I always get this. So, I, so it's depending <coughs> on which uh, example I try. So uh, the sync 1 and sync 2 are always producing this error. I think producing others. I don't know <coughs> what's wrong with this. So should. Hmm. D will um, the stream 1 compile? Stream? Stream? Ah, Let's just try stream one and just see if if it's only a problem with buffers. No. Uh, result the count, same, error. same spot. The okay. The same error. Error. The error is but within the TS. Um, yeah, so there's something that is not fully implemented in this version. Q1. 
kill Paris Eric and two point five nine. So the GCC yeah. six is obviously working, so yeah, I'm using it on six and it's okay. I need to add this. Oh, you had to add the this? Yes. Otherwise, it just complains that it couldn't call the cloud method in yeah. the context. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but uh, as I understand, the clunk can. <laughs> yeah, Kling, Kling does. So, um, but you're you're compiling on six here, right? Yeah. yeah so maybe. It's would you say five? What? Five, four, oh. Actually, four. It's async one that we're supposed to kind of be doing. Yeah, I'd start with async one. And then the thing that you just took off is what we're supposed to change. That one. <laughs> Uh, which compiler version would you recommend? Which compiler? Yeah, version for either Kleinus or GCC. Like GCC 5 works. So I know GCC 6 works because I actually that's what's running on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and then I am... Oh, well, this is the Apple version. I don't know what that means anymore. <laughs> Okay, so just to catch up with what I'm sorry, you're here. Compile the async one. Got that yes. running with the way it was. Now I'm going yes. to replace that with, you know, replace the get. Yeah, so with the post. You, you could do this a couple different ways, right? You, so you could write your code so you just like replace the post with that and get your name on the list. Or you could like, you could write it a little bit differently. You could say, hey, I want to write something slightly generic that allows me to post JSON. It's called JSON application stuff, right? So that application JSON is gonna post JSON, you just say text, somewhere. But always when you're posting, the important part is it wants to know the body length. So you would calculate the body length and you'd stick it in the header, right? So that way you're not just replacing. Okay, so what, well, I have it compiling on Visual Studio 2017. It's impressive. And I ran it, and it gets the web page from Boost right now. So I'm okay. just trying to move forward without totally screwing up because Taking I'm using everything Studio. Apart? <laughs> That's all. It's, just, uh, it's because you're wearing the Microsoft shirt. You well, no. because I don't you know, believe in Unix the, or Mac. The current, <laughs> the current versions work fine. <laughs> current version's fine. So, um, Tom, I'm not sure what to do about the GCC thing. Um, uh, I'm not I sure why it's a parse to, uh, error. I think I'm not sure by looking at the context of what we have, why that's an error. And uh, oh, you know what I have? Here you go. Uh, nobody has succeeded yet. Get your name on the board, man.
Can't do that inside of your terminal, can you, Doug? What? Search back in history. Grab that command that you did and then edit it. Who uses command lines? I don't know. How can you guys actually work without one? That's what I can't figure I'm out. still waiting for you to put the screen back up that I need. <laughs> Slow down. I just want to make sure that it actually... Is that, that isn't on the USB thing, right? No. The text that you put on the editor. That no, it might have been nice though, huh? Would have been useful. Yeah, it would have been. <laughs> hey, look, okay. <laughs> so it does appear to still be working. Somebody over here was having run problems, I think. He was having run problems, I'm having a problem. Did you get past your run problem? Um, no, it crashes on screen iterators. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For <Nice>. async one. <laughs> maybe, maybe you need to form an army. Right? Yeah. And yeah. the army has to use a buffer to remove. Yeah. Sounds like it was you. You need to pay it forward. Builds and runs to here, and then as soon as you tell it to wait on the future, it uh, is trying to dereference the string iterator. Maybe there's a bug in my code. What, what a surprise that would be. Well, it's on waiting on the future. Um, well, that's that's the point in which you see it, but I suspect if you move on up, um, it's one of these one of these guys that's causing us grief. But I think the way I would start. Um, taking a look at this is just seeing where inside of this stream of events that you are, right? So, um, as Ben was mentioning, the idea of of completion handlers that kind of chain together, you kind of think of them like a state machine. And so, just try to figure out where are, where are you in the state thing when it's actually bombing, and then from there we'll be able to figure out what what is invalidated, maybe moved that we didn't plan on moving and reusing or something of that sort. Okay. That was a moment ago. What's request? I claim formatted it and it decided to add a space there. Oh. Which is strange thing for Clang format to do, actually. It's not a great place to put a space. Yeah. Are you doing it on your phone? No, I'm just reviewing these. Oh, okay. Because I had... You, that would be incredible. So in 2012, I gave a talk on modern C++ techniques. It was like this three-hour course, and it was like just all hands-on. All we did was like learn how to do template metaprogramming, basically. And it was in Flute, and the guy in the, like, in the front row had his phone, and he had like SSH'd into a machine, and was doing all the exercises on his phone. It's like, the guy is way over the top. <laughs> like crazy. If what counts? <laughs> That's not quite the same, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it's one thing to control the robot. It's another thing to control the robot from Gore's machine. Which is so how do you specify the service? The resolver? So it argues. Oh, put it in quotes. 
Yeah. Yep. So the second argument to the resolver resolve call is a string, which it will try to look up inside of the service lookup to determine what port that's for. And if it can't find it, it will actually convert it into an integer. Yep. So if you um, if you send something that's malformed um, within reason, the server will send back, "Please try again." Yes. Yes. You could just you could read. So after you send, read back whatever. Is coming back. Yeah, you will see a response back. You're either going to be seeing a response back that says, please try again. Or, um, or success. It's working with 6.2. Okay. Are you getting a response back? Uh, I suspect what's happening is I'm getting a very short response back. Oh, yes. I didn't fix the thing with the header and the body. Okay, yep. The response will be short. But in that case, what do we, so There's a JSON body that comes back. So we, when we say here in read header, it's doing read until RNRM. Mm -hmm. And that's actually going to read the entire response so that then when there's no error response and we go to read body and it's going to try to async read some stuff, yep. I would think it would immediately get this yep. error code, wouldn't it? Um, yes, in the file or... At yep. which point it should set the promise with the header and the body. Now, are we setting the wrong thing for header because it really yeah, put the entire body all the way into the, the header and body will still be empty. Keep wanting to get the end of file? Um, probably not. You think you think you need to? Yeah. Oh. There we go. I think so. I'm not saying I'm right. I definitely think so. What's the suggestion there? That, uh, the server won't close it. Is that an HTTP header field? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Thank you. So, I'm sorry. Uh, it, yeah, in the other examples, it has that header bit in there. Are you getting header back? Did you change it to ch connection close? <laughs> oh. Hey, why do I have to refresh this? Ooh. All right, there. All right, what do you guys work that you happen to know this stuff just like that? Yeah. 
I've done this so many times in my past, you have no idea. <laughs> Where you're opening up a telnet session right. and then just typing well, stuff in? Yeah. Building HTTP, yeah, for yeah. whatever stupid reason I had about that. Um, so, different for a different so question now. We were yeah. talking before about the lifetime of the objects representing a client on the server. Yeah. And managing shutdown from the server side. Right. How would you do that? So, yeah. So um, when we have conditions like that, yeah. what, what we do is we register the client in. Okay. So that's a trap. So you register the client. And we register it. In the manager. Somewhere. Manager? Not necessarily. It's, what it, it's usually a signal handler. Um, so using something like boost signals too. It, so it's just um, producer consumer type model. So you can just say, hey, I've got this thing. And, um, and then everybody who's registered for it gets notified. And um, the advantage is we hold, um, so it's not that you're registering yourself necessarily with a manager. You're basically saying, I'm interested in a certain type of event. And when that event occurs in my system, then I want to know about it. So they shut down themselves? And um, th so whatever is generating those events, right, takes care of notifying. And the way the notification works is it doesn't hold the shared pointer. It holds the weak pointer. And so the client can still go away, right? And it, when it goes around, it grabs, it takes the weak pointer. From the weak pointer, it gets the shared pointer, so that's going to maintain the lifetime of the client. It can then send the message of, hey, we're shutting down now, and then it releases that. And so it never plays in the ownership model along the way, um, but it, it has the capability then of providing signaling if it needs to. Wow, you, you like two sentences make me feel so incredibly stupid. I built a modification of shared pointer that allowed one person to hold it and still go away. That allowed what? One person to own it, and it that's not what deleted. Oh, is this sort of shared? That's what saying. It's <laughs> almost shared. <laughs> it's, like, you know, it, it's more than so one shared. Shared pointer. <laughs> 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 yeah, weak pointer. That's the way to go for that. Ooh, Kirk. Hey, did you did you cheat, Kirk? I don't. I can think of a lot of different ways to cheat, but. You mean just because I happen to already have an HTTP library in the RX that I can use? For example, your very own, yes. No, I didn't have a public way for websites out there where you can just get. Right, yeah, you could do that. You, you could do my favorite, you could just install Postman. Right? And use Postman to do it all. You could use curl. You could use wget. Postman is a great idea. Yeah, Postman's a great idea. It's like totally cheating. Look at you. Oh my goodness. All right, Alan, I'm taking your name off if it shows up. Oh, I in the in the substitute of the simple task. Oh, you want to pull up the code and change this to be this arrow. Oh, send request. Please. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yes. That, yes. So GCC would prefer you actually take this arrow, the call, when you capture this. Yeah, right. <coughs> oh, no, no, no. Removing people's names from the list would be very rude. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see if mine went through. 
Yeah, I don't see it. All right, how's it going over here? Great success. Face the fall. <laughs> What's that? It's loose to me. One four four. Face the fall. Oh, well, that's uh, that sounds like you're making progress. <laughs> Do you have the URL inside of the request, or at least the? Yeah, uh, right this there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and instead of HTTP. It's actually 8,000 is the port that it's listening on. Yeah, there you go. So it's the, by HTTP, it opens port to 80? Mm -hmm. Yep, or whatever it looks up in the service that says that's HTTP. Will be 80. Oh, there you are. Success. Uh, but it's not. But it's not getting the return. Not getting the response. On success, it's not in. <laughs> it doesn't reply. It's synchronous. <laughs> <laughs> it it does reply on success. So. Uh, but it, but okay. Oh, it's probably stuck inside the header. Yeah, it was such a short response back. You're probably stuck at the read until here because it read more than. Uh, it read uh, the, the body also. More, uh, more than but it should cause socket after or um, you need to add the the connection close yeah so let's add one more header and then you should be able to get it And the other header is called connection, was the key. And for the value, put close. Yeah, there you go. That should do it. Yep. Thank you. You could be. Well, that's the simplest way. I don't think I should be replacing these angle brackets, but <laughs> it doesn't resolve that, so. Oh, we can't find it? What, what do you have for your include path? Uh, well, that's exactly it. I think I'm seeing it. It's just doing this, and so I probably should just go off everything. Um, did you add an include path? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, what did it do? So this is just auto before because I didn't manage. Oh. So I made an I made a my own CMake file and then that didn't work. So I just did a manual. And, I see. But usually, yeah. Instead of including, you just do something like. Uh, you want to um, you want to just add the I forget what the, I'm not I'm not Mr. CMake here. Yeah. It's um set. Mm. I gotta go look at another CMake file in order to see what it is. <laughs> oh, here, this guy—he's—he wrote a CMake file. So. Adding the uh, include path. All right, what do you want to now? You're about to type. <laughs> ah. Oh, nice. Because what I actually meant about baking in the algorithms yeah, yeah. is the mere fact that there is a parameter for control and a parameter for the lambda. Mm -hmm. To me, it is a mistake because it means the only way to use them is to inject your algorithms into the reading system. Hmm. So what I normally what I normally do is use um, 
read sum to get whatever's in the buffer at that time. Yep. So I just grab those, whatever's there, and then I push it off, right? And the other end might be making a stream of it, it might be doing all kinds of different things. A super common thing is the other side is um, a, so it brings that into what appears to be a stream buffer, and um, there's a spirit grammar that's parsing the stream, and because spirit is um, stack based, um, then there's a coroutine that takes care of, I don't have anything else in my stream yet, switches on over, gets the next bit in the stream, switches over to spirit, lets it parse the rest, switches back over. Yeah. And then, uh, so, sounds like that's uh, what you're approaching. Well, is to so create. the thing that I want is just like the STL, I want a set of algorithms mm -hmm. that you compose, just mm -hmm. like in range of V3, so that when you call read, it returns the concept required, not iterator, because mm -hmm. that's for in values distributed in space, and now we need values distributed in time. Yeah. Whatever that concept is, I want that concept to me to be able to type in, yeah. filter, transform, window, buffer, uh, retry, timeout, repeat. Like yeah. There's so many things that I can do right. that I only have to implement once right. instead of actually lambdas re-implementing all of those things yep. every time I want to write the application. Yeah, you functional reaction of people. <laughs> so, uh, this is one page. <gasps> See, but I don't have Koei. Well, you don't, but if, if you use the proper compiler, you would. <laughs> I mean, I think I, did I mistype something here? Mm -mm. Sh should it be hidden or not? Should it be no, hidden's correct. And um, as long as the length matches the content length there, oh, uh, then it'll well, work. I have to count. Yeah, that or you actually have to calculate it. One of the two. Yes. 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 But anyway, can can um, can we take this and put it up on the screen in a moment? Because yeah, I would like after 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 you make after it work. I make sure it actually yeah. gets to gets there. Yeah, because I, I do want to show people what it looks like with coroutines. And um, that, that answers that guy. Yeah. That says, oh, do this. No, no, this uses Netbook and JS. Is yeah. it? So, like, right now I have a little write, sugar. Yeah, yeah. I have to write the adapter, which is like this one, for example. I see connect. I simply return the waiter. Yeah, but makes sense. It's and it can be automated, and it can be added to the whatever it's merged to the whatever. Yes, right. But anyway, so yeah, I to count the numbers. nice. I would love to see that too. Yeah, the the. I want to show that to everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll put it up on the screen here in a moment. Awesome, yeah. Thank you. The reason why I asked about the thing is because one of my, you know, I'm a contact. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm doing is they have a, a networking library. Mm -hmm. And a, a quick thing might be to just uh, wrap the networking library in the network in GS and put it. Yeah. It allows so, you to continue working with the things that you have. The existing code base. It allows all the new people to. Move over to something that's working. Yeah. Or is there a reason not to just use a networking TS? Well, you just said that by the time this is compiled, then there would need to. Yeah, but this would be like grabbing the boost library, basically. It's it's basically ASIO, right? With a different interface naming and a couple other things on it. Yes. Well, you could do that. Yeah, that's obviously. Pardon me? So the boost one uh, requires, I think it works under 98, the boost ASIO. But it's like falling behind in times. So um, the non-boost ASIO, which is called standalone ASIO, standalone ASIO, it's still being currently maintained. There was a push to it just like two months ago. So Chris is constantly updating that to reflect what the networking standard more or less is. Um, and then it gets these name munges as he pushes it over. Yeah. And actually, um, one of the reasons why we want like you know GCC and Clang to write their own mm -hmm. is because in the process of writing an implementation of that standard, you can come up with wonderful deficiencies, sure. mistakes, um, uh, things that could be improved. You know? Yeah. Like if you have just one person that wrote a library and it's been used for ten years, and then that becomes the TS. That becomes the implementation, but you're kind of operating this 
Because that can really... So be... it depends upon what you're concerned about. If you're concerned about bugs, like latent yeah. bugs... No, I'm sure there aren't that many of those there, because... There's like, yeah. yeah, hundreds of thousands of users, you <laughs> yeah, know, across all these different bugs. platforms. I'm concerned more about like uh, making sure that you can contribute also to the to the, to the standardization yeah. of that TS. Uh, mm -hmm. so I guess you yeah, have to write it to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Writing it would help you to figure out exactly what can be improved with it or not, right? Is that true? Both, both stuff, yeah. I, not, I, because, especially if you already have a communications library, which is already abstracting out a lot of the... Uh, you understand what I'm saying? It's a little different than writing it from scratch. I understand right. writing it from scratch <coughs> can be a very arduous task. Yeah. And you might be wondering the entire time you're well, doing it, why you're doing it. It, it might be, <laughs> so depending upon what, um, what your networking library looks like, it may still be, it might be really hard to take the conceptual ideas that you have in your networking library and adjust those so that they work on the interface that's expecting more or less a pro actor with some of these other ideas and concepts, right? right. And so you got to figure out how to map those concepts onto your fundamentals. That might be really hard. The text spec is, is not based on any pattern, right? Like you, the R pattern would be, would be, we use R pattern, the Bloomberg pattern, to implement the TS. No, no, the reverse. TS is decided. Right? I thought you'd have to do the reverse, wouldn't you? You've got the TS, and now you've got to somehow map the, map the TS, the semantics as well as the yeah. idioms, into whatever you have. So the TS says there's async, and, it, and this completion handler is involved in these three conditions. You know, an error, and successful, whatever. Right? That's what the TS says. It doesn't say how you're going to do that. I'm more interested in the opposite. Well, I've always done the opposite. I don't want to expose the text back well, I guess people continue using alternative to H. Reimplement in terms of that. Yeah, exactly. Reimplement. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because a whole lot of people might be on whatever. No, no, no. I would be more interested in the R interface. Reimplement in terms of the text spec. What's the text spec? The TS. Yeah. Yeah. What's the text spec? Text spec, okay. I thought you meant R text spec. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. Okay. What we might meant in terms of the text spec so that we can have our still supported. Yes. But people would want to use something yes. a bit more modern. Yes. No, yeah, no. So we would implement the TS. Oh, I see. No. There's an interface. We would write something based on BTE. Yeah. You would implement BTE in terms of the network? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying. I don't know what you're saying. That's not what I'm saying. I agree, it's not what you're saying. I'm saying that to get a quicker way of getting the, to get a quicker way of getting the, uh, the, uh, the, the stuff up and running, we you almost, we almost just finished work. Yeah. We're doing dirty harm. Okay. I don't care. I don't care. Or using Boost, which could be an issue. Yes. No, no, you want to find out how the TS can be improved. Yes. 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 Of which I know a little bit about that you have with Boost because it's standalone. Oh. <laughs> some, of the, some of the problems about that kind of stuff is that you know we have like a, a, our own stuff, which is like heavily instrumented with metrics, yeah. trying to analyze what the machine is actually doing in yeah. these cases. And yeah. you can't just drop in something else and be like, well, it's yeah. doing the equivalent kind of thing, right? I mean, it, that's what it's like. It's very hard to, to well, you know, should we be doing this? Is it reasonable to argue that there should be like exposure points of all the decision making that's going on in the implementation? Um, is that just distracting for the overall good, which is standardizing something mm -hmm. that's relatively controversial? Um, it is like we do have a different model. It's, I don't know what you call the proactive or whatever this executive thing is. This, uh, Ours is backwards, how we, we, basically people have done it for the last 15 years. Okay. Right? And it's like callbacks on threads that are. That are not owned by like the it's also <coughs> not even a good implementation yeah, of that. It is what it is. But, um, <laughs> it is um, there is like different design of principle of friction out there. Um, but just in general, like yeah, like what do we do about you know, we have all this transparency into what the implementation is actually doing. <sighs> You know, allegedly, <laughs> you know, and that like, well, just taking somebody else's library and like wrapping it, you lose all of that, right? You know. I guess the question is, are there people right now that are writing this 
implementation oh, for different types of shift or platforms. Shift is that on, is that happening right now? Not that I know of, but um, I'm not I, I'm not the guy that would know either. So from what you said earlier, we may hope it may start in June-ish. Yeah, I don't know. I mean next year? Um, July, this July is when we hope the technical um, spec is actually. I don't know. I have no idea. Because if you assume it's the process. If you, so do you use this problem in your hiring process? <laughs> no. <laughs> My hiring process is very strange. <laughs> I had a, a question about uh, the resolver and the time of this. I, I didn't actually get in the first session. But what is the philosophy of timing out something like a name resolution? Mm. What, what, do you, what, do, what, do we try, what are we supposed to be doing here? Um, so it seems very you know, architecturally pure, but... Yeah. There's a huge distance, distance between, as you said, like the Iowa Streams example and all these like wrenches yes. that are just laying at the bottom yeah. of your toolbox. And we kind of, everybody kind of wants to be somewhere more in the middle. Right. I yeah. totally agree. Yep. You kind of, so these are like the building blocks to build something else on top right. of, right? Like um, if the sense is I have to like register a timer and do some sort of like completion, yep. like wiring and all this cancellation stuff, like. Yep. Like, that's unfortunately that's what it is, right? With the same interface that like all these other languages have, which is just do this and time out after this, which is what ninety nine point nine percent of people actually want. Wait, it's that's just, it's frustrating about this uh, this kind of process because it's like you're delivering. I mean, there can be no more finer slicing of you know this is this is doing exactly what this is doing, no more. It's not contaminating anything else, yeah. but nobody wants it. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> so. But that is that is more or less like what you're supposed to be doing. That is the that is the technique, yeah. So you um, you figure out when and what and semantically what the timer means, yes. right? So it can mean all kinds of different things. Yeah. Well, you know what? It should auto refresh, and if it doesn't, we should uh, we should let Woodsy know because Woodsy Woodsy wrote it. Oh, well. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yeah, it's Arthur's trying to increase his odds here. Yeah, well, we'll just hit the button again if Michael case. Yes. I have a quick question. Since you think Operation cancel on the connection. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, one moment. Yeah. Gore, we, sure. we have like 15 more minutes. If you want to stick your thing on there, the, I, I the text. Stick, uh, stick your thing on there. The, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Transfer some bits onto that thinga. Okay, so I, I hacked this just to familiar pattern with O3 ACO is what I used. Okay, so I start off with a connect. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, I got the res resolver. I get the endpoint. I pass it in, and I'm supposed to get a. If if I get no error, then I do this send my request. If I run it, I get operation canceled. So I am. I just wonder if it's a claim three five issue because. What do you, um, that's that's where the error is coming from. Can I see what you're trying to connect to? Um, well, I'm dumping it right here. But so post. Uh, yeah, where where are you actually making that call? I'm gonna in the main. Well, if, it, if you want to work within it, you just install it. didn't the change the name on it. I just did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could spell that right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move back on up. Yeah. 
I don't really use this in play. Yeah, it's no, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I wonder what if it's a coin three five. Not quite ready for C plus plus four. <laughs> Operation cancel gives me a different idea. Uh, so let's look at your main again. Did you modify the main at all? Do we have a work object? <coughs> we do. Yeah. Context, work, work guard, get the thread, work at the run. Oh, so. this is going out of scope. <laughs> you have it in a try block. You're calling connect, which is returning a future. Okay, that's good. Yeah. All right. That's almost like success. That's probably because your name plus the PSK and all that is not 42. It actually is. Oh, wow. All right, so you and I have the same thing going on here. Yep. Connection close. Yep. What? Subtract. Nope. <laughs> oh, that's because you are sending it to the wrong port. The port is 8,000. Instead of HTTP? Yep. yep. Not the host name, but in, in the oh, service name. Go ahead. It's, it's, your, it's your opportunity to... <laughs> Right. Just successfully transferred that virus. It's small. Or if it does compile without changes under your Visual Studio 2017. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's okay. It had to be something. That's really too bad. This is why I don't like the Mac sometimes. It's missing all the cool stuff. Is there no Pad++ for the Mac? Hmm. I don't know. The compiler will not be okay with this. Not the compiler I'm using. Sorry. Can't do search and replace? Uh, of uh, whatever this weird thing is at DOS stuck on the back end? When are you guys going to give that up? Can you highlight it and copy paste it into the search and replace? All right, so. Um, some people have uh, compilers that are fancier than other people's compilers. So if you had a really fancy compiler, oh wait, this is not it. <laughs> oh, 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 there's a lot more. Uh, <laughs> 
All right. Here we go. Here's the poster. So this is um, this is using coroutines, and it would be incredibly silly of me to talk about coroutines when Gore's here. Um, let me just say though that this solves the whole just string futures together, which becomes just like this horrendous continuation nightmare, um, and. No longer are we dealing with um, the inversion of control problem where we've got this state machine thing that we have to think about if, you know, if that's not our thing. Uh, we get to write you know, just pretty normal code here. How many people are, have seen Gore's talks? Already know what all these things do. Let me ask it differently. Do we need to know what this thing does? You guys, <laughs> Gore, take us through, man. You take synchronous example then replace all of the places where there was a sync call with call await space in sync version. And otherwise, it stays the same. Okay. Uh, and, and, it, and, and the return back would be a speed feature or something else that can represent the fact that the value is not great yet. But otherwise, the code looks like synchronous code. But it goes straight to network interaction with a tiny little bit of adaptation layer, which hopefully by the time it's in the standard, it's the Okay, so, so Gore took the same thing that we're all using with those header files, his magic compiler that understands co-await, um, coroutines, and um, wrote a little bit of glue logic, but the glue logic is, is pretty minimal that's up, up in the top section here of the file, and um, can just treat it almost like that synchronous thought of how things are going. So. How would you use this score? You'd probably call this function from something else, right? Well, uh, at some point, somebody has to wait for this whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but normally, activity owns the thing. Thus, you just launch your, your uh, tasks, and then when your IO process is shut down, that's where all of those guys will get errors and get skimmed down. Okay. So the lifetime is similar to what you described. Yeah. Can you see where the future is returned and where the promises will go? So, IO run is the thing that that you got. No, is the um, I'm sorry. Poster. So poster is where we're starting this off, right? Yeah. Which is what we were just looking at. This is a poster. Where's the return of the future? Right here. In this case, it's a future of war. That's just reaching the end. Ah, oh, the 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 just function is like completed. It's completed. Yeah. It's the synchronization. And where's the promise fulfilled? Well, that that's by the exit of the. Well, yeah, but it's when we reach the term. Right here, the end of poster, or a return. That's the beauty of it all, right? Or if an exception is thrown anywhere, uh, on the bridge, uh, it's usually people who will be completed. Have you had some folks who have represented like a return mm -hmm. return to a coverting at some point, or? Right. Uh, yes, if you want to have an explicit return statement, it is now spelled co-return. <coughs> I'm sorry about that, but uh, it's in this case, well, it's like a normal function. If it returns void, you don't have to say return. Okay. The void of the end of the function mm -hmm. is your return. All right, nobody got to hacking the robots, actually. And what are we supposed to do next? We've got five minutes. Can you show the whole story? Yeah, yep.
-hmm. How much of the poster did you want to see? Gore, are you on the, are you on the Slack channel? Yes. But not in this 3 seconds. No. Um, how about later can you can you put out a link to this? Sure. Already compiled for Clay and SDP so that you can try and go. Okay, right. Cool. And this compiler is available to download. You have to do it your own plan. That's fine. It's much easier. Can I ask a question about so um, how would you like await the two asynchronous things? Uh, you need to use some kind of a user adapter, like when all or both is yeah. complete, or a user which says all or both are complete and apply some reduction of duration to the result. What, how do, how, what, how do I find uh, this? Let's, I, I suggest maybe we can move on to the real question to the sure. break. Yeah. The, so I think we're we're nearly done. Is, is anybody like on the edge of posting their stuff and they just need to get that last bit? No. We should just like randomize the list and give away a robot. That's what we should do. Which we won't be able to use because we didn't get to that point. It'll be sad for you. <laughs> All right. So um, you all should double check the list to make sure that there aren't duplicates that are not your name. <laughs> I have a whole office full of these things. I don't need more. <laughs> All right, look good. Ta da! Here we go, the magic. Bam! Doug! Ooh. All right, let's see which one I, I got. Not this one. Let's give you one that we know that works. <laughs> this guy. Do we really know it works? <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's his IP address. Okay. If you're on a Aspen Meadows network, Okay. He will he will get onto there, and um, you can SSH into him. Okay. I'd keep that a secret because, uh, or I'll, I'll tell you Anybody the could? I'll tell you the password here in a moment. Oh, okay. It's got the <laughs> compiler on it. There's some sample code to drive yeah. wheels and whatnot, and some networking code already on there. So you okay. should uh, you should be able to make him run around. So I'm here all week long. If you have questions about networking stuff, uh, feel free to ask. I love to talk about networking stuff. Um, if you've got bugs that you have found inside of my slides, I'd love to know about those too. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much for hanging out in the workshop.